Welcome back to the garden here in Raleigh, North Carolina. In this video, I'm gonna go over a lot of the plants that we have in the garden that have been tree formed, meaning they've been limbed up from the bottom. So they're things that you would think of mainly as shrubs that would typically have multi-trunked uh, bottoms. And some of them will have, still, still be multi-trunked, but they will look more like trees, little multi-trunk trees. We're on a small lot here in Raleigh, North Carolina, and there's not, um, we, in order to be able to plant lots of different things out here as plant collectors, we're gonna have to limb some things up. You'll find as a gardener that over some period of time, a lot of these shrubs will limb themselves up anyway, and I'll show you an example of one that's doing that uh, right now. But it rained a little bit last night, so the limbs on these things are weighted down just a bit. They're not quite as you know, standing up as they, as they normally would be because they're, they're wet. This Shasta viburnum was done this season, and this plant has kind of a horizontal habit anyway, as you can see. Uh, and again, it's weighted down just a hair this morning. We were gonna have to constantly prune this thing to keep it in the space that it was in. And if you prune these Shasta viburnum, it take, can take a couple seasons for them to bloom again. And so the, the answer to that was, I can get the planting space up under it uh, and around it uh, back by limbing it up into a small tree. And then I don't have to constantly be hacking on the top of it. So that was the reason that this one is done. And I think it looks great like this. And again, there's some ground cover. There's a, a, a low growing distillium, epimedium, some hosta, hellebores, lots of different uh, things now can be tucked under here uh, and allow this beautiful plant to take its natural form. One of the absolute favorite plants here in the landscape is this Rosalinda Indian Hawthorn. And if it wasn't limbed up from the bottom into this tree form like it is, it would just be a big round ball. Most of the Indian Hawthorns we use in ornamental landscaping are little little meatball things, you know, that typically grow two or three feet tall, or maybe a little taller, and then doming a little wider. Uh, Rosalinda is a very vigorous grower. Leaves are probably twice the size of a dwarf, uh, regular, you know, common dwarf uh, Indian hawthorn. The other thing is the flowers are much larger and they're fragrant. One thing that's neat about this one, not only turning it into, you know, a tree form like this, uh, that makes it more interesting and allows us to put some carex and other things, uh, up under it is it also has interesting bark. And so I noticed on this, this one, there's one limbed up at the J.C. Ralston Arboretum into a, a much larger tree than this. Uh, and the bark is absolutely beautiful on it. So that can be another reason too, is to, is to come up with, you know, exposing part of the plant that's actually attractive that would never be seen uh, if it was just allowed to be, you know, limbed all the way to the bottom. This Miss Kim Lilac, uh, another great example of one where we bought a lot of we bought a lot of square footage on the ground by bringing, you know, limbing it up from the bottom. And there's even a hydrangea planted back here. Uh, the two hydrangeas planted under here. Again, epimedium, hellebores, uh, bego uh, hardy begonias, uh, juga, all kinds of things that were able to layer down to the ground level. They did a little time to fill in, but uh, they, they will in time. This one is definitely weeping this morning from that, uh, from that, from that rain last night. This one really looks great, and it's a, this is another one that does not take well to general shearing and pruning on it. So if I had it limbed all the way to the ground and I wanted to keep it back all the time, uh, I'd end up costing a lot of flowers. So by limbing it up, it's got all the growth on it that it had this year. I won't cut it, and uh, we'll get it to bloom fully next March or early April. This thing is pretty early flowering here. This is um, a Korean lilac. It's uh, hardy here in the south and allows us to it's very consistent giving flowers in the south there are a couple suckers down there so when you do this some plants will uh, try to come right back from the base a bit so occasionally you've got to crawl under there and cut a few out there were a couple in the shasta over there as well the indian hawthorn we haven't had a sucker on it since we've had it so you know some plants are going to be more likely to sucker than others put up additional growth that you want to cut out then this is an example of what I was saying about a plant limbing itself up. So this Edgeworthia has been here two and a half years or something, and you can see the bottom of it is already, uh, you know, pretty naked under there. It's on its way to being a small tree uh, in this spot. There's an azalea back there that's moving away. I'll probably end up moving a couple other things as well, but uh, I, this is in, ultimately going to just form a small tree in this space. I'm going to have to cut it back just a hair around here anyway. And so I'm hoping that in the future I can get it to come up and over this path. 
but it's doing it on its own. Uh, and this is something you'll see on your shrubs. And you can decide, I can take, you know, after it blooms in February or March, this thing blooms really early, I could shear it back, right? And I could force some growth down in the middle and keep it fuller to the bottom, or I can just go with it. And by going with it, um, I've been able to plant other things in and around it. Here's a future tree form coming. Uh, this is a viburnum nudum. This is a native viburnum uh, to the to the eastern United States. This is another one. There's no <laughs> kind of bee visiting. Uh, there's no great time necessarily to prune this plant, and because of that, you know, if I end up in a situation here where I have to just do any kind of general pruning on it, it's not going to be it's not going to be great for getting flowers and getting berries set on this uh, every year. So I'm gonna begin the process this winter. As soon as it loses its leaves, I'm gonna go down to the bottom, identify about three main branches uh, down at the bottom that I wanna keep, and then take off a lot of this other growth that's around it. It will also help this Joe Pye weed. It'll help this uh, uh, Hydrangea paniculata that's back here. Everything will benefit from me raising the skirt basically on this uh, and putting the canopy up higher. Also, it's not getting quite as much sun as it would like. Uh, the house blocks the sun for a an extra hour or two in the morning. Uh, if it can get a little bit of height, I think it will gain a little bit of, a little bit more sun every day, which is gonna help it as well. Here's a hydrangea paniculata uh, that we got on a trip down to see Dr. Durr. It's literally a, a one of a kind. It's got exposed flowers, so it's had pollinators on it the whole, uh, the whole time this season. And I've been working on turning it into a tree form. There's a fig next to it that I literally cut to the ground 60 days ago, maybe less, uh, and it's already back over seven feet tall. So I'm gonna cut it back down to the ground again. It's moving. I've actually already cut the roots on it to move it. It's gonna, it was gonna be in a video later, but it's decided to grow uh, about five feet of growth in four weeks, uh, which is five weeks or something, uh, which is kind of funny. This one still has a fairly thin trunk on it. And these hydrangea paniculatas actually have beautiful bark. Uh, it's a little bit thin and now, you know, that rain from last night, I can see it's just so heavy up here. I may come back in here as far back as here next year and take off, you know, re kind of reset this. Where I've been, what I've been doing is making cuts and then establishing three branches from each of those cuts. And I did it last, you know, did it at the end of the year. Last year, there was a video for it and I did get my three branches here. You see it, I got all three, they all bloomed. I think I may go back down here and do it again uh, next year and not allow it to get any additional height really next year and let this thicken up uh, just, just a bit more to make sure it's not. I feel like if I just cut under these flowers, let it branch into three, uh, that it's never, gonna, it's never gonna wanna stand up straight in these rains. Pretty much all the tree forms in this video, uh, I've done in video content over time. This uh, tree form, Encore azalea was bought as a tree form. Encore azalea, it would it'd take a long time to stake one of these azaleas up and, and get it to this point. So this, is, uh, this, was one, this was one to actually find and purchase. It's got a few limbs from other things that need to be cut away from it, as you can see. Uh, there it is, it's actually budded up. It bloomed in the spring, it bloomed a few weeks ago, and now it's absolutely covered in flower buds again. And I don't know if they'll hold off at this point until September, or will they go ahead and start opening pretty soon. Uh, but I can see that literally every branch, the end has a, has a bud on it. it. Right now, it's about three and a half feet tall. You can see, I think down here, it's staked. Um, I need to move. Uh, if you're staking these things up, occasionally you need to go retie them so that that tie doesn't restrict the growth on it. These ties have been on for a long time. So I need, I'll leave the stake, cut the ties off and retie it in a different spot. So it's not hurting, not hurting the plant. But again, this one was purchased. Uh, as a tree form, and it's really, really interesting. It needs a little bit of, you know, things cut away from it a bit, but really love this one. This one is kind of why I started this video uh, this morning uh, when I looked out here and saw that the viburnum macrocephalum is actually in full bloom again. It blooms in the spring and typically will repeat bloom a little bit in the fall, but here we are right at the beginning of August and it has tons and tons of uh, new growth on it and it's seven feet tall. And when this video went up of turning this thing into a tree form i don't know when that was maybe two maybe two months ago it was only you know maybe two-thirds this height and it was only just literally one 
uh, trunk going up. Since then, it has suckered, and this is what I'm talking about right here. This is some suckers from the bottom. You know, when you start cutting on things, you're gonna force new growth down low. So I gotta go in here and clean up, clean up the trunk a bit. But if that aside, that's absolutely a perfect tree form coming up. The dahlias are obscuring it a bit. Absolute perfect tree form coming up. And now where this thing was down here flowering and it was gonna be shrubby and I would have had to either move the Clara or move the Sunshine Ligustrum, it's now gonna come up over the top of them and fill that whole area uh, up above it. But uh, Chinese Snowball Viburnum, this is, the, there are a lot of things called Snowball Viburnum. We have uh, Japanese uh, Snowball Viburnum, we've got uh, European Snowball Viburnum, and then the Chinese Snowball Viburnum. And this one tends to have the largest, as you can see, the really large uh, clusters of flowers, and they get even bigger and fuller than that in the future. Beautiful foliage on it, and just a great form. And this one is really kind of easy. Uh, to uh, to tree form, you need a sturdy you know a sturdy stake. Clean, find a good straight branch, clean it back to that. Cut everything else away, and then voila, uh, just that quick. Uh, um, it's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. You're in full control of a lot of these plants, uh, conifers and some other things. Maybe not so much, but a lot of these leafy evergreen or leafy deciduous uh, shrubs. You'd be amazed at the amount of fine control that you can have, you know, by cutting them in a certain spot, you can get them to branch, you know, in that spot and branch the direction that you want it to branch. So thank you guys for following along. There's some of the reasons you might uh, turn things into tree forms, uh, and, you know, to save space. Or again, sometimes they'll just naturally tree form themselves by being in a little too much shade or something like that. Uh, and then you can go with it and, and work with it out in your garden. Thanks for watching.